What's up, people? Welcome back to 4-Bet Blind. My name is Will. Today, I'm recapping my day one run in the Gladiators of Poker tournament at the World Series of Poker. I've been on a bit of a downswing lately, so I wasn't sure I was going to make it out to Vegas. Thankfully, I was able to organize a team of local investors to help me raise the capital necessary to make this trip. The buy-in for this tournament was only $300 with a $3 million guarantee, so I was expecting some fireworks and I was not disappointed. Without further ado, let's jump in. I start the tournament with 30,000 chips, which is about what I have in this hand where I'm dealt pocket queens in early position. The blinds are 100, 200, 200, and in these low buy-in events, you don't want to be bashful with your sizings, so I raise to 3.5 big blinds, which could even be larger. Only the small blind calls and we go heads up to a flop of deuce 4 7 with 2 diamonds. He checks and I bet around half pot 1000, hoping to get value from any draws or pairs and maybe even some ace high combos. No luck here though as he quickly puts his cards in the muck. Next hand there's an early position limp and a call from the small blind when I look down a king 3 suited in the big blind. I check my option and we go 3 ways to a flop of 9 6 9 rainbow. The small blind and I both check and the early position limper bets 300. The small blind folds and it's back to me. With king high and backdoor spades, I think I have enough equity to continue, plus I'll have the opportunity to bluff on a bunch of different runouts. So I make the call and we're off to a turn which brings a very interesting card, the 10 of spades. I think this is a great card to lead as now I have some decent equity and can credibly represent nutted hands like straights or flop trips. In game, however, I decide to check hoping to get the opportunity to check raise. In retrospect, I'm not a fan of this play as people are rarely going to bet this turn and when they do, they're usually not going to fold. So if I'm going to start bluffing, I prefer a lead here. As played, I check and my opponent quickly checks it back. The river brings the deuce of clubs and it's time to decide how large to size this bluff. I like a pot sized bet as it credibly represents some very strong hands and only needs to work 50% of the time. In game, I opt for a smaller sizing, the smallest sizing, 0%, and go for a check. I think I was picturing the times my opponent has hands that I beat, like 4-5 or queen-jack, which is theoretically possible, but not very probable. If my opponent's range was Doug Polk's walk-in closet, me winning at showdown would be like trying to find a shirt with sleeves. It's just never gonna fucking happen. So when my opponent checks back and flips over pocket fours, it's no surprise. In conclusion, this hand wasn't anything catastrophic. I only lost an additional one and a half big blinds, but to me, it's indicative of a lack of proper planning and consideration in my thought process, which is definitely hurting my win rate in these tournaments. Moving along, the next interesting hand starts during the 200-300 level when under the gun opens to 900. I'm next to act with pocket nines and make the call. Four other players make the call as well, so we're going six-handed to a flop that comes 4-5-7 rainbow. That's pretty good for pocket nines, but I start to feel a lot worse when the small blind checks and the original razor continues for 3,000, exactly half pot. I'm next to act and this is almost as uncomfortable as the time my girlfriend walked in on me watching Game of Thrones with a box of tissues at my side. It's a very emotional show, okay? <clears throat> While I do have an overpair, under the gun just c-bet 10 big blinds into 5 players on a very coordinated board texture. People almost never bluff in this spot, so the big question is what value he can have. He definitely could have hands like 5-6, six, 6-7, six, seven, or 7-8. Seven, Another huge portion of his range is overpairs, almost all of which have me smoked. Looking at this range, along with the fact that I've got multiple players behind me who have yet to act, I decide to make the very nitty laydown. If he had picked a smaller size, or there were fewer players, or I was in later position, I probably would have called, but in this configuration, I think it's just a bit too scary to continue. At this point in the tournament, I've been playing for a few hours and things are definitely not going to plan. I'm down to around 23,000 from the 30,000 start stack and the blinds have increased to 200-400. Still, not every tournament is going to be a walk in the park and I'm determined to stay focused and pick my spots wherever I can. Which leads me to the next hand which starts with an early position limp by a player I'll call Lenny. Lenny is a very inexperienced recreational player. 
His only shot at winning this tournament is if a biological weapon is deployed in the casino, killing everyone present but sparing Lenny due to a rare genetic mutation. So when Lenny enters a pot, everyone at the table has been lining up to join the action. This hand is no exception, as soon after Lenny limps, the hijack raises to 2k. This player had been particularly active, so when it folds to me on the button and I look down at King-3 suited, I start to entertain sinister intentions. If my read is correct, the hijack is going to be isoing a very wide range here, much of which will fold to my 3-bet. I think I also rarely get 4-bet, and I'll be able to play in position with an uncapped range the times he does call. I block value like ace-king and kings, and unblock his weakest opens like 7-8, 8-9, etc. So I go for the 3-bet here to 6k. Lenny folds and it's back to the hijack. Thankfully he doesn't go into the tank and instead makes a quick decision. Whoops. I actually still like this play. The only thing that concerns me in retrospect is that he went very big with his sizing, perhaps indicating a very strong hand. That may have been a bit of information that I missed, but other than that, I think this is a print. Still at 200-400 for the next hand when an early position player opens to 1.1k and the low jack calls. I'm in the big blind with 7-8 of spades and make the call. The flop is pretty nice, it's 7-7 deuce giving me trips. I check and the action checks around. The turn brings the 5 of hearts and it's time to start getting some value. No one has showed much interest in this pot so I don't want to go too large, I bet 2000. The original Razor calls while the low jack folds. Off to the river now, which is actually kind of bad, it's the 8 of diamonds. Most of the hands I would bluff with on the turn improve on this river, so I don't expect to get called very often. That combined with the fact that my opponent has shown as much strength as that kid who played McLovin make me want to pick a smaller sizing. I settle on 3000 into 8000. My opponent quickly makes the call and I table the winner. Super glad to take this one down and hopefully get back on track. The blinds go up to 300-600 and I chip down to 18k before the next hand where the button opens to 1.5k. I look down at ace4 in the big blind and elect to defend. The flop comes king-jack-10 rainbow, giving me an overcard along with a gutter to Broadway. I check and the button c-bets for 1.1k. Getting over 4 to 1 here with some decent equity, I decide to make the call. The turn is a total brick, the deuce of diamonds, and I check again. This time my opponent checks back. The river reminds me of when I'm sitting alone at the Cosmopolitan at 2am as all of a sudden a beautiful woman appears and says hello. Thankfully this one isn't going to tie me up and steal my wallet, it's the queen of diamonds giving me Broadway. I opt for a check to protect my range, as I'm going to have all sorts of one pair type hands here that will be extremely vulnerable if I always bet my straights. My opponent seems to pick up on this weakness as he bets 4000. I think this is an interesting spot between calling and raising. If I call, I get some really practical information on what hands my opponent is playing. If I raise, I really only get called by an ace and maybe very rarely a 9 while getting less valuable information. I do end up going all in here, but I think calling might be more valuable. I'm not sure, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on this. Either way, I pick up a decent sized pot and things seem to be trending in the right direction. After that hand, I do a bunch of folding and slowly start to bleed chips as the blinds climb higher and higher. Eventually our table breaks and I rack up this impressive chip stack to move to a new table. I'm looking for opportunities to regain momentum at this new table, and one quickly arrives when it folds to me in the cutoff and I look down at King Queen. With only 15,000 at this point, and the blinds at 600 1200, there's only one play. I toss my chips into the middle. The button immediately rips in his 70,000 chips before the small blind also goes all in for his 40,000. I fully expect to be stone fucking dead, but somehow the small blind flips ace 10 offsuit? The button has a real hand, pocket queens, but still, I'm pretty live here to triple up. Good luck. Midgets and mice. Yes. And just like that, my tournament draws to a close. 
Overall, I think I played okay, with some significant mistakes mixed in with some decent moments. The hand where I floated king 3 of spades out of position against the limper was pretty rough, along with a couple other ill-timed bluffs I didn't include in the vlog. On the other side, I liked my fold with pocket 9s in that multi-way pot and think my preflop bluff with king 3 versus an aggressive player was well reasoned. So overall, some solid plays with lots of room for improvement. That's how my gladiator run ends, but I've got plenty more action from Vegas to bring you, including some juicy cash games with some really cool people and some wild hands. Stay tuned for that, and in the meantime, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, see y'all in the next video.